Hello everyone! Merry Vlogmas! Yes, it is the 1st of December, which means it's time for some Christmas content. I wasn't here last week, I know I missed a week. I actually should have taken a longer break than the one that I actually did. And the reason why I didn't film is because it was Cyber Week, so Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all of those very important but extremely busy days for anybody who works in fashion, retail, consumer goods, etc. I didn't have time to do my nails. I wore black all week long, which is something that I hate, but all because I did not have time. So I thought instead of just filming something useless or, you know, boring, I would just skip a week. Hopefully you can forgive me in the spirit of Christmas. This year I want to do exactly what I did last year. Hopefully you enjoyed that format. It was instead of filming every day, which is just something that I cannot fit into my routine, I will post sort of a diary of the week things that I did, foods that I ate, things that I bought, all that fun jazz with a little bit of Christmas sprinkled in there. Don't mind me just hitting my arm in the tree, making twinkly noises. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I asked this on my Instagram, but I'll ask it here too. If there's anything that you want to see, if there's anything you want me to show you, leave me a comment in the comment box below. This way I know what to bring to you. But today is still Thursday and I still have some work to do. My phone is buzzing like crazy, so I gotta get back to work. But I just wanted to check in, kind of cut the ribbon of this vlogmas season and be merry and be bright. way later now and I wanted to show you something. So you guys know how much I am a big advocate for having your nails done. I always talk about my favorite nail polish of all time, the London Town Illuminating Concealer. This thing is magical. If you don't have it, get it. They are on Amazon, really easy to apply, seamless when it starts to chip or not look perfect it's undetectable so it's very practical and my nails are quite hard to paint because they chip from the first day i'm a big fan of red nail polish burgundies i think they're super chic but they just peel off my nails for some reason my nails are very fine very brittle very kind of weak in their structure so nail polish just sort of slides right off it but i saw this product on a bunch of influencers channels and i wanted to try it it's the green flesh manicurist nail polish it's a semi-permanent clean alternative to kind of gel manicures so it is made with a bunch of natural ingredients like cotton like corn like sugar cane and wheat so you get that same permanent nail polish effect but with better ingredients which usually is better for your nails influencers rave about it but they're also kind of paid to rave about it so i don't know i wanted to try it for myself i tried it this sunday and this is the result I mean, we are on Thursday, so not great. It started chipping pretty much immediately, but I didn't do a great job of applying it. So what I'm gonna do today is give it another shot. This way I can tell you if indeed it is worth it or not. Right now, I don't think it is. I paid 75 bucks for the little kit. It has all of the pieces and instruments that you need to do your nails. So it comes with their nail polish remover that is also very natural, which is great, not very rich in acetone, so not so harsh on your, on your nails. Then it comes with these little clips that are just like the ones that you get in the salon. So you, if you want to take off your nail polish, you just put some cotton with a lot of nail polish remover, clip these in, and it will help kind of losing 
the nail polish out. Then inside you get three steps. So you get the base coat, you get the actual color. This one is called Dark Pansy. This is a very beautiful dark Bordeaux red, which I think is very chic for winter. And then you get the little top coat. And like gel manicures, they even send you a lamp to cure the nail polish. So it comes like this, very thin, very slim, very portable. Then the little legs come out and you cure your nails. So maybe if you don't have finicky nails like I do, this will work better on you. I saw a few reviews on YouTube, there are many, and people said that they cured for longer than it is advised on the package, so it might be that as well. I will try to be better today because when I applied it on Sunday evening, I did it in the dark, I didn't wait a long time, I did it right before bed, so it kind of got all marked and weird and to see everything i will be using my little <laughs> ring light because i'm blind and my house is very very dark so i want to do this right to give you an honest extremely precise review i'll just start by taking off the nail polish so i have already taken this out and the fun thing about this nail polish is that it comes off like normal nail polish so you don't need to do the whole scraping that really gets to me to me it's extremely nerving when i go to a manicure and she starts to scrape the nail polish out of na my nails but these ones see it just comes off so i'll get these nice and clean and we'll start painting well i have applied the first layer and i'm gonna cure it under the lamp and i think i'll do two passes because I don't want it to get mushy. While we wait for that to happen, I thought we could talk about something that has been quite the topic this week, which is the whole Balenciaga debacle. I debated doing a video about this this weekend. It's the other reason why I didn't post. I didn't want to put out a video in the state of spirit that I was in because I was livid. I was outraged, I was mad, I was going to say things in a very negative, pejorative, not me tone. And it's not that I don't feel that way right now about it, but I just don't want to put that personality out there. I think we have enough diss channels, gossip channels, I don't want it to be about that. So I'm sorry if this is coming in this medium. But if you have been living under a rock, the very famous brand Balenciaga did a campaign that was their holiday campaign, no less, with a few tinges, a few veiled, not so veiled elements that made reference to children exploitation and you know what I mean. I'm not even going to mention it because I don't want YouTube to think that my channel is about that or talking about that. The point is they kind of did it, I think, thinking that no one would really care or realize the amount of Easter eggs, terrible, disgusting Easter eggs that they sort of sprinkled around the campaign. People were so outraged that they were looking for signs and they found many, which is way more worrisome. The first thing I thought is why? Why would a brand do that? But then, and of course, I got to the same conclusion as a lot of people did, bad intentions, not respecting the boundaries of childhood, all of those things are very problematic in our society right now. But something else came to my mind, and I do think that this comes from working in fashion and knowing how these people's brains work, which is the weight on the shoulder of brands and creators to be shocking all of the time. And I'm not saying that this is a an explanation or that this should be seen as an excuse. But I do think that the thought process was, okay, we have been doing some pretty crazy, irreverent things for years. What could be more shocking than that? And they went that route and it was probably the worst choice the brand will ever make in its history. 
I don't know if they can come back from this. It's just sad because when you think of Balenciaga, at least I, a person who has studied fashion history and who has appreciated Balenciaga's design, especially their older designs, who they were in the past, I appreciated that very much. But now I just, I don't see it. Like, I, I don't get it. And that points to a situation that I think many of us feel right now, which is that the emperor has no clothes, no one knows exactly why we like it, but it's supposed to be cool, so we say we like it even though we don't. And I guess this is a great little case to remind us that we don't have to like what everyone likes, we don't have to be involved with brands that we don't feel speak to our hearts and to our creative souls. This sheds light into what the fashion industry has become, this repository of freaky weirdness that has its place, but at the same time, if not done intelligently and with a higher purpose, can turn into trash. I find it sad to see it happen with such a historic high fashion brand, especially because, I mean, the way they have been acting about it, they've been trying to remedy it in some way. That is just awkward, clunky, no one's buying it. I mean, they are suing people who are involved creatively, which is obviously not good enough because if you work with any type of creative industry, you know that a holiday campaign, more than any other campaign, has to be approved by everybody. It's not just something that people throw on there and nobody knows about anything. This, this has gone through many meetings in many rooms with many important people. I don't know. What do you guys think? That about the Balenciaga thing, because I mean, 99% of the population is just disgusted by it but about the state of fashion itself. I do understand that some brands have the role of pushing boundaries and of making people reconsider things and not put people in tiny little boxes, be more mindful of the differences between us because there are, but I do think we're going a little bit too far. And I hope that this will kind of bring back a bit more effort, a bit more dedication of designers to their craft instead of just trying to sell us trash bags for hundreds and hundreds of euros. Rent done. Let's go to our second step, which is the color. Now, this is, I think, the most critical step of this routine. You'll see that it is a beautiful kind of burgundy. And I do think it's very opaque as a color. Very thin layer, like the lady said. And it pretty much gives me a lot of color just with that bit of nail polish. I am Brazilian, so I like to clean the edges very well and since this dissolves in the nail polish remover I actually clean up the edges afterwards so let me do this to all of my nails So I have passed it through the lamp twice this time and now before I put the final top coat I will just clean the little borders of my nails. You will see that I went over my cuticles because I like to have a very crisp nail. So what I do is I get these little cotton buds. These are from Muji. You'll see that they're very, very fine. And I use them to clean around the edges. I'll use this because I feel like their own nail polish remover is pretty good. I'll just clean around my nails like this. You get a very crisp, very polished, no pun intended, result. I'll finish cleaning this up and I'll apply the top coat. All right, you guys, I have cured this three times. The third one, I did it for like half the time. I'm still kind of 
insecure about this it does look very shiny does look you know professional but i think that the ultimate test is going to be sleeping whenever i sleep with a lightly fresh nail polish it always kind of wakes up in the morning completely dented so we'll see i'll do the other hand and we'll check back in tomorrow because it's already kind of late and i'm already kind of sleepy i might even do my other hand tomorrow we'll see happy saturday everyone it's raining it's blusterous it is extremely extremely poor weather and of course the solution to that is going to a museum so we're going to the richard avedon exhibit in the palazzo reale museum which is somewhere i think i brought you before i think it was a spring vlog if you're feeling springy i'll just leave it limp here but i'll show you what i see it's supposedly an amazing exhibit. Richard Evident is one of my favorite photographers ever. So I think I'm gonna really like it. And there's probably going to be the usual Christmas market at that region. And I think we're going to make the most out of this very gloomy day. Well, that was totally fabulous. I think that Evident has this very specific and very refined ability to photograph people with truth, but also with glamour, which I think shows in his fashion photographs, in his portraits, in either if he's photographing a very famous supermodel or a head of state. He always manages to just be very deep about it, but not incomprehensible, which I think is exactly what we want when we are looking at pictures. So if you are in Milan, I think this exhibit will last until the beginning of January, so hurry up, totally worth it. And then at the end of the exhibit, you can get yourself the little book with all of the pictures so you can admire Avaton's work forever. Now, I think we're going to, oh my God, this angle. Now I think we're just going to take a little stroll through the city center and then we'll go home because it's still raining. It won't stop. Hey everyone! Happy Sunday! This is the last day of this video but I just realized I forgot to show you my nails. So this is what they look like. I got them done on Thursday evening. Today is Sunday so about three to four days look pretty good you can see there's a little chip here i feel like this one's going to start to chip not perfect but for my nails i'd say it's a pretty good result if you count the amount of dollars slash euros that i'm going to save with manicures just by doing this at home it's a lot but at the same time i do prefer my london town nail illuminating concealer so you have to choose between the two I would go with London Town. I think that is the perfect solution for those of us who have a hard time with manicures. To end this video, and I was reviewing the footage, and I feel like it wasn't Christmassy enough, so I thought that maybe I would make it a little bit more useful, at least, by showing you how I like to style ponchos. I do have a few ways of styling this type of piece because I think they are extremely versatile and easy. 
it's not an added piece it's not something that has to fit you perfectly it just gives you that extra layer of interest of styling that allows you a lot of options of course no one will have a wardrobe of ponchos but if you can i would advise you to have at least three actually if you can only have one this is what i think you should have a very basic knit sort of throw this is not even a poncho because technically a poncho is that layer of knit fabric with a hole for your neck i like it when it's open like this i know that some people call this a wrap a ruana a throw but this i think is the most versatile that you can get because you just throw it on you can take it off easily it doesn't ruin your hair it can work either as an outerwear piece as a layer so just a base of poncho that will always serve you right but if you want to add something i would probably try and have something that is in a print so just like scarves ponchos have that ability to add interest to your outfit based on how you choose to fold it or how you choose to wrap it this is a great option that i got a thousand years ago from a brand called cotton on is a fast fashion brand from australia but you will find this anywhere i love the play of the negative and positive space with the black and the cream it just complements a lot of the tones that i have in my wardrobe adds that graphic element without being too out there which i love and you can also invest in something that is a little bit more substantial in fabric this is something that i got at zara again a thousand years ago as well sorry guys i just keep my pieces forever and ever when i wear them but this is in a wool and you'll see that it has this more not serious but a little bit less out there color which is great for wearing it in the evenings so if you have a more formal evening if you are going to the theater if you want to just wrap yourself around something but not really throw on a coat this is a great option it is double-sided so you can either get a very black surface or something in this beautiful herringbone i know that there are a lot of brands that do cashmere as well which is again great option for keeping you warm without having to throw a coat on and it has a little bit more length so it will give you that presence that drama that those other options might not but let me show you how i like to style it because that is what you're here for isn't it all right so i just put on a black base you can see everything clearly but basically what i love about ponchos is again that sort of added drama to an outfit so just a total black outfit turns into something a thousand times more glamorous when you throw on a poncho you even throw it over your shoulder come on and the thing is that you can play around with how you fold it how much you want around your face if you want something very closed off if you want something a little bit more open more thrown around the arms it'll just give you that freedom to manipulate it in any way that you want to and i also sometimes especially with this one that is double face what i do is i fold it over so you can see the inside of it and i get that black here you can see here better and then i'll add a brooch i just got this little guy at an antiques market beautiful very delicate but again against a black background like this will make a big difference like that so from the side you can see the brooch you can see a bit more of black it almost turns like one of those medieval capes in the front it is very covered very warm and you can totally play around with where you position it you can put it on a more central position but if you want to be even more dramatic you can throw it over the front of your outfit so you get that more poncho effect with just the neck showing but then on the back if you're wearing maybe a beautiful low cut or something in a contrasting color you will get sort of that highlight around your back 
and you are still covered, warm, fuzzy, and perfectly fabulous in your poncho. Then with a poncho that is a little bit more light, you can get more versatility during the year. So this, you can see, it's more fine, a little less warm, but again, a great layering piece will give you that movement, that flare. I especially love this type of poncho because if you belt it, it's not too bulky, not too voluminous. Let me show you. I'll just pass it inside the poncho, so I'm not gonna close everything off, otherwise you're completely stuck. But if you pass it in the inside on the back part and outside on the front part, you get yourself and beautiful silhouette. It almost looks like a little cape. I think it's such a charming little way of styling it. Very easy. Anybody can do it. Any belt will work. I would particularly love this in an elasticated belt as well because it would be even more comfortable. But it just gives you that versatility with a piece that is basically a block of material or color and you can just play around with it, kind of adjust it, open it up a little bit more, close it up. I think it also makes a big difference what you're wearing underneath. In this case, I'm wearing something very basic, very neutral, but you can always add a scarf as well. So in this case, just to be a little less disorganized, I will put the scarf on first because what you don't want to do is start layering up so much fabric that things start looking kind of messy, kind of too bulky. So I'm just going to throw this over my shoulders. This I got from H&M last year. I think it looks so classic with the sort of rope detail and the beautiful nudie kind of neutral colors. So pretty and complimentary to anybody's wardrobe. I like to leave my arms very free to move. And you can do two things. You can either close everything up and close your poncho and you will get very snugly with just a little bit of fabric showing. Or it can be a little bit more free with your styling and leave it open. So you get the layer of print but you also get the coverage from the poncho. And you can mix this up with so many different types of scarves. If you have something in a more fine, delicate fabric, you can tie it just as you would any other scarf. I think this type of knot really benefits from the combination with the poncho because you're creating that V-neck. If you want to learn how to do it, just take a look at my scarf video, throw on your poncho and again, close it up and it looks like you have a whole piece underneath or leave it open and it's just an accessory. If you want an ultra, ultra glamorous alternative, they have a bunch of these faux fur collars around or if you have a vintage fur that you want to wear more but you feel kind of constricted or it's too flashy throwing it on with a layer over it will show it but will kind of break that lushness of what a furry piece might have and it will cover it a little bit. So it's a bit more subdued, a bit more discreet, or you can wear it under it and get that full on effect. I love this look. I think it's very classic, extremely elegant. Reminds me of what some of the ladies in Milan usually wear in this time of year. It's just that added texture that maybe doesn't work during the whole of the year, but in this time kind of holiday, Christmas, snow season, it's very appropriate, I think. And I've talked about this in my outfit journal, the last one that I did. My office is extremely chilly. There are times in the day when it's a little oven, but there are other times when it is just absolutely 
gelid and freezing. Is gelid even a word in English? Someone let me know. So sometimes having a poncho in hand will kind of give you that coverage even at your desk, but you won't be, you know, throwing on your coat and looking like you are a snowman. And of course, this is not enough to go outside. So I just throw it under a coat. I fold the sleeves so that I can actually throw on my outerwear piece. But it almost looks like a scarf when it is all layered up. So this way you don't have to carry it around. You're actually wearing it. So you have to get on the subway, get on a taxi. It's not just a bunch of things that you are having to have on your hands. I think it is very discreet. And once you get to the office, you take off your piece, you hang your coat and you're left with a cozy, warm little layer that still looks very chic, very elegant. You can, again, throw it over your neck. You can leave it open. You can even kind of leave it like this if it's starting to get a little bit warm. <sighs> ponchos, ponchos are just your best friend in this time of the year and nobody talks about them. And in terms of which types of colors you can, collars, not colors, you can wear with a poncho, I think the options are endless. Anything that is close to your neck will add a little bit of interest. So if you have maybe something in a ruffled, color, if you have a more rigid, sticky color, if you have a polo neck, a pullover, anything like that will sort of add a bit of detail. In this case, I wanted to pair it with this beautiful silk shirt just to show you how simple pieces can be sort of highlighted by a poncho. So again, I am placing things carefully. In this case, putting my hair back would also have been a good idea, but let's let it go. You can either close it up very, very tight. You can leave it open, but with the collar placed, you can open it a little bit more just so that you get a bit more movement and it is a little bit looser, a little more casual. And if you want to add a brooch as a detail and not as a closure, I think in this case, it would also be a beautiful decorative touch like that. Yes. You see, it's the simple things. If you have pieces in your wardrobe that you know how to style, that you know how you can maximize their use. You don't need too much. You don't need a whole closet full of clothes. You just need to be smart, be curious, and be a little bit bolder about how you choose to style your pieces. This is it, everyone. I think I'm going to cut this video here. I still have to publish it. I still have to enjoy my weekend. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, I know it was a little bit chaotic and kind of here, there, everywhere. I want to bring you more Christmas content because I know that Vlogmas is very much about that. And Milan does have a bunch of really cool, pretty, festive, cute things that I really want to share with you. I also think I'll be doing my Q&A in the next Vlogmas because some of you have already left me some questions in my Instagram, but if you have questions that you want me to answer, leave them in the comments below. This way I know which ones to address. And yeah, hopefully you have a great festive season, whether you celebrate Christmas or not. And thank you so, so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.